Hey everyone, welcome to Make Your Peace, a 4 ye podcast about Winona Earp. I'm Catherine Mushaw. And I'm Laura Hayes. And today we'll be discussing Season 1, Episode 4, The Blade. And as per usual, I want to say thank you to everybody who has shared and reply, like commented and all that stuff for previous episodes. We really appreciate it and we love interacting with you guys. You guys are the best. All right. So, you want to start with the title? Oh, I, quick recap I would too. first like to, yeah, <laughs> first we're going to do a recap. So uh, this episode, The Blade, like you said, um, is a skeptical Winona forces Doc into a telling game of target practice. The team investigates a woman's bizarre mirror-related death. All right. And the episode title, I think it's definitely a reference to The Blade being carried by August Hamilton, the demon barber. Mm-hmm. Or Augie, as he's called, but uh, <laughs> maybe also something to do with how the truth cuts deep or the truth cuts like a knife. It's also the title of a song by Ashley Monroe. Oh, I like that. <laughs> um, thank you, as per usual. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so now where do you want to start before I jump the gun again? <laughs> I say go ahead and jump the gun, dude. Let's see where it takes us. All righty. So this episode is a fabulous Herb Sisters episode. It is a really good one. And I'll say, I've said it before, and I will say it again. I love the Herb Sisters. They're one of my favorite, like, sister relationship relationships on TV. I adore them. <laughs> and um, I just, I love how like this is such an important episode for them and I love it because we do get to see some closure and um you know we get to see Waverly kind of actually be honest about like her feelings and stuff like that which is nice to see yep so I I I just I love the Earp sisters and I love that last scene in the episode where they're like talking through that and everything and it's just it's so great from the you know you know, like the heartfelt apologies and conversations to Winona, you know, opening up Waverly's imported bubblegum sake that is (laughs) disgusting, (laughs) but she tries. (laughs) So I, I agree with you. Waverly is so dead set on being agreeable and likable. She can't even own her own anger. So she, she wasn't able to break August Hamilton's curse, assuming that if, she forgave in his timeline. He would have followed through and spared Winona. Jury's still out on that, but yeah, it's it came out later the way all things do over that disgusting bubblegum sake that you <laughs> mentioned. And I think this is the this is at the core of Waverly. You know, she wants to be special, but she's not special in the same way as Winona as uh, Willa. It, she yeah. tries she tries so hard and it's like she's only treading water you know she's stuck in this town she's trapped she she's trapped on the sidelines of this curse the same way that Winona is trapped in the jaws of this curse yeah and I mean she's just she's so smart and I like how we get to see that in this episode especially like finding out that you know she went to and studied like ancient languages and stuff like that and you know, she got her four-year degree and you have to consider she's 21 years old. Yeah. So to get a four-year degree, she would have had to go like, she might have even had to do it like a year early. True. Yeah. Depending on, I don't remember, we don't know when her birthday is, but (laughs) either way, um, you know, so that's um, like, I love that. And I love that, you know, we find out that she, you know, because a, a four-year degree by correspondence, I mean, that's that's got to take longer than a regular, like, if she actually was going to school, I would assume it would have taken longer to get, maybe. I mean, at the very least, it would have been twice as hard without the benefit of being able to go up to a, you know, a TA and work with them or uh, the benefit of, you know, like, sitting through a lecture and being able to put your hand up, you know? And, yeah. Uh, everything that goes along with a, a classroom setting. Yeah. And I mean, I love that. I love that scene where she's, um, you know, dolls asks her if she can 
Bri- uh, how is her Latin? And <laughs> it is like how, how she's like, I'm totally awesome at it, you know, <laughs> or maze balls. But, and I have a fun fact about that scene with where Waverly mm-hmm. reads the, the Latin in the book. Yeah. Dominique uh, Provochocli actually memorized that whole thing. Ooh, wow. Um, and I think it was, she either, I think she memorized it not realizing that she'd have it in front of her. I'm not sure. Either way, but yeah, she she memorized that. Wow. Yeah. I don't remember where I pulled that random piece of trivia, but yeah. So, <laughs> Dom is also totally amazed balls. Um, but no, I love that. And I like that even though Waverly doesn't get to go really out with the group to go do things, you know, it's just usually when I'm at dolls, I do like that. You know, Dolls asks Waverly for help and says, you know, hey, do you know this revenant and stuff like that? And he's, he's like really good about including her. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. You see it. You're right. Yeah. You see it with, you know, she helps with the spell because she does speak Latin and then later her research helps identify the demon. Mm -hmm. So she's certainly, yeah, she's certainly bringing something to the table. I mean, she did get to... she kind of helped with it later had she not been at the lake with them, you know, maybe it wouldn't have gone that way because Winona was able to kind of loosen up that, that hold he had on her when she was talking to Waverly. Yeah. Cause like, even though August didn't believe that Waverly was, you know, trying to forgive Winona, like he wouldn't accept Waverly trying to forgive her. Winona was still kind of trying to at least do something like with it. So I just, I love how, I love how the show does a relationship. I really do. <laughs> I do too. And I thought it was really cool using reflections as a vehicle for the demon of the week, especially in an episode that revolves around guilt. And guilt is something that shows, something that wears on you. There's the mm-hmm. saying, how do you face yourself in the mirror? Or how can you stand yeah. to look at yourself? So I thought that was just a really nice touch. Yeah, it really, I mean, they're, they're pretty good with pulling out symbolism and sh- stuff like that. And yeah, no, it was, it was such an excellent choice and it was done well. Um, the only thing I wasn't big on was kind of Doc's role in some of this. Like how, how they, do you mean? how they added him in this, because it's like, you know, he's acting like he doesn't know the Rev in the beginning. It's like he's still being kind of shady because it's like he's acting like he doesn't recognize August. And it's like, well, I mean, you killed him. <laughs> like, you put him in that lake and you're going to... He put people in danger by not owning up to what he did immediately. Yeah. He's definitely one like... I think you I think you see that though a lot with mm-hmm. dolls and doc. They're both all about like oh, yeah. compartmentalizing information. Yeah, it just I didn't like that was one thing that I just bugs me every time I watch. I mean, this is a good episode and it's like our first really kind of creepy revenant. Yeah. Like, this was the first episode I was like, "Oh, like this is this is really kind of like it was a little more like it was a little different kind of a, a like a horror movie." you know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Kind of vibe to it. Different from what we've been getting. And I I just, I enjoy it. He's, um, it's a good revenant. It led to some really great moments. As per usual, the writing was on point. Yeah. But there are some really great moments for really every character. And we'll get into this in our spoiler section, but it kind of, it kind of, lays some groundwork for later on stuff for later stuff too. It's really good. It's really good character episode. Absolutely. And you're right. It does plant seeds for later episodes. Thank you. That's, that's the word I was really trying to, everything is hard. (laughs) Catherine can't word. I, I really, I love Winona in this episode. I mean, not that I don't always love her, but the guilt that she carries around is just unreal. Like she assigns herself guilt in the murder of her sister and her father. We know that. And perhaps because of all the misery that followed her after that night, she just keeps piling the guilt on. And now Megan Halford's actions 
are her fault. She's always her own first suspect. And it's, yeah. it's fitting that we should, that we should get an episode so early on. That's all about forgiveness. Winona still has a long way to go forgiving herself, but I think Waverly's forgiveness will help. Oh, 100%. I agree. And, um, because with that, yeah, and I mean, well, I mean, look at the victims too. I mean, Winona has a connection to each one of them, and you know, it's another really kind of heartbreaking thing about this episode was we find out more of just how deep the fact that she was institutionalized mm -hmm. yeah. runs, because you know she is she sees you know August in the mirror, and then she immediately is like so worried about dolls thinking that she's she's crazy because he knows her history and it can be used against her yeah i honestly i have an almost identical note on that it <laughs> uh, yeah it's there's there's a there's a when bobo confirms for us like mm -hmm. beyond the shadow of a doubt that winona was institutionalized for telling the truth you know he just sort of throws mm -hmm. it in her face as you would expect yeah. Bobo to do. And she manages for the most part, not to rise to the bait, but you can kind of see the hurt on her face. And then later yeah. when, like you said, like when she sees the demon barber in the mirror, she fully expects dolls to discount what she's seen and to call her mm -hmm. crazy because the, the comment, you know, she didn't show it, but it clearly left her raw. Yeah. And I mean, like, well, that's all like, she's been so like, that's, Oh, it's, you know, that's, why not? I'm just going to, you know, brush it off. If she's crazy. That's why she was so excited when he actually said the word demon. Absolutely. You know, and I mean, it's, it's interesting because we get that little bit of it in episode two with, with Waverly saying, mentioning the curse. And she's like, I've never said it out loud. And, you know, it's just, it's, this stuff goes deep. Yeah. And yeah, it wasn't just like, Oh, Winona was there for a little bit. No, she was months at a psychiatric hospital months. And um, that's just, that's awful. And she was 12. Yeah. You know, she was 12 and 13. And, you know, she also mentions by 16, she was in her eighth foster home. Yeah, that was really sad. And it's just, it's heartbreaking, especially considering as far as we know, Waverly didn't get put in the system because it seems like she stayed with Gus and Curtis. Yeah, no, I think that we can safely say that. I don't, I don't think she was in the system. And like, that's a whole nother thing. Like, why was it that Winona was shifted through foster home and foster home and foster home? Especially like if she stayed in purgatory, like if she stayed in town, everybody knew her business. Well, it could also be like, part of it could also be that, you know, one, everybody thought she was crazy. Mm -hmm. And two, they thought she was dangerous. Yeah. So it could have been like, Gus and, and Curtis were too happy to take Waverly in to keep her safe, but they could they couldn't have Winona around her who they viewed as a danger. Yeah, I mean it's just it's awful. Yeah, no, it's terrible. Especially like in situations like that, a good family services worker tries to keep the family together. <laughs> yeah. So it's just it's awful and it's just you know, it's hard not to feel for Winona and Again, I say this all the time, but Melanie does such a good job with just like when, um, uh, when that one, when her old classmate, Samantha was telling her the story about how, you know, Megan had to confess something to her, you know, you see what, like, if you watch Winona's face, it's just the moments as she slowly realizes that what happened that night and that she, you know, immediately assigns blame to herself. You know, it's immediately. immediately. Yeah. You know, I did this and I like how, you know, especially we were ragging on dolls a little bit, or I was especially last week um, for like pulling some crap, but I do like how he, how he doesn't let her beat herself up, like blame herself, how he's like, he takes the time to kind of comfort her and be like, you were only 16, like everybody makes mistakes. And I liked that. Yeah. He does bring like a very sort of 
it's funny. It's funny given like what he does like to say this, but you know, like I know we're dealing with like such fantastic elements, but he is, he is very rational, Mm -hmm. you know, like in, in his approach in uh, to everything in his, his reasoning, you know, he really prides himself on or centers himself on fact and uh, rationale. And Mm -hmm. so it was nice to see that, It was nice to see that as not as something that Winona was butting up against, but as something that brought her a measure of comfort. Yeah. No, definitely. I am. Yeah. It's just, it's, 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 you get just so many little like punches in the heart and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I love, I loved all this, all this role in this because he, you know, he could have very easily done something different. Oh yeah, Absolutely. So it was just, it was nice to see. And then I like uh, when he's, you know, when they bring Doc in and he's like, you know, has that interaction with Doc and that, you know, pissing contest with him. But no, it's um, where he looks at Winona and is like, you didn't tell me, or when were you going to tell me you were kicking her with the ghost of Doc Holiday? So it's like, mm-hmm. I love, he gets a lot of really good, like, shifts yeah. in this episode. Yeah, and like dry, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he laughs. We get to see him laugh. And I love how Waverly and Winona are, like, horrified by it. <laughs> yeah. That it's scene great. between Doc and Dolls in the holding tank I, is one of my favorite moments of this episode. I just, I like the way they're both um, sizing each other up and the way they're sort of probing for weaknesses. They're mm-hmm. both clearly already feeling some kind of way about Winona. And I, I also, oh, I forgot... I wanted to tell you, like, um, Doc was called Hank, like, twice in that episode. So it was not, like, you are not crazy. I know. Absolutely. (laughs) I was watching it, and I just started, like, laughing, you know, like, as I was taking my notes. I was like, ah, vindication. Yeah, because I I think it happened last episode, too, because it's Winona and Bobo have done it. Um, And then everybody else calls him Henry. Yeah, they'll call him Hank. He's got yep. too many nicknames. I think we just need to stick with, uh, yeah, he's got too many names. I think he just needs to be Doc. I think so, too. It's it's better. Um, I love the Doc backstory we get in this episode. Yeah. Speaking of, especially, like, this is not, like, a shipping hill I'm going to die on, but, like, I remember watching this for the first time, and I was like, oh, so Doc and Wyatt... <laughs> Like, I could ship it. <laughs> I could ship it. Because I do... They they have such an inter- interesting interaction. And I, I like that we get to see kind of some of this. And So I do like that. And I do like that we learn... Um, you know, we get some information about, like, where Doc was when uh, Wyatt was cursed. And, you know... Because anybody who knows the history of Doc Holliday mm-hmm. um, knows that he he died of TB. Yeah. So I like how they kind of, you know, they're like, oh, hey, here's him with tuberculosis. And that's why he couldn't, you know, that's why he wasn't in purgatory. And um, we find out that, you know, why it was cursed um, while in purgatory. Well, he, because he went up there to take care of a, a shady sheriff and dolls tr- or sorry doc tried to warn him sorry why it goes up there to deal with a, a a shady sheriff and doc tries to like warn him yeah um says something about like you know i've i've heard you know there's rumors that the sheriff is half devil and um you know he comes back and he's like there's demons that walk a- among us and all this stuff so and he kind of you know why it's kind of a jerk <laughs> well, that's another element of this. It's you kind of expect a certain character from him, and he's a very like he's he's presented as a very black and white character. Oh yes. So that's just kind of like I, but no, definitely with the way he reacts to like Doc still being alive and finding Doc with like a couple of women, you're like, hmm, why are you so upset, Wyatt? What's going on? <laughs> so yeah it got personal real fast mm-hmm. just a little bit more than like yeah so 
you think he'd be you, happy that his friend was alive. Yeah. And you, you touched on like another really important, well, I mean, you talked about like another really important piece that we got this episode. And that is that, you know, it, the canon does follow the history. Doc Holliday was dying of tuberculosis. He made some kind of deal with something that cured him of TB and gave him eternal longevity. Yes. Yeah, I hadn't gotten there yet, so thank you. <laughs> I was like, I was like running through what. Yeah, so that was a really important. We do find out that um, it's he was, uh, you know, it's eternal longevity because a couple of people suggest that he's a ghost. Yeah, but he is very corporeal. Yes. Well, and then Doc has that like smooth line with Winona where he's like, "If I were a ghost, would my heart be pounding like this?" And he like takes her hand <laughs> and holds yeah. the track. And you're like, damn, Doc is smooth. <laughs> I love him showing off his sharpshooter abilities too. Oh, that's so it's, good. Again, yeah, it's just a really cool like uh, skill set that the character has. So it's nice that you know he got to show that off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, because it's another like it's a very mu- it's very much a these like we've play- we've taken these characters out of the box and played with them for a little bit, but they're still like the characters that you're familiar with, you know, it's still, you know, Doc Holliday, who's, you know, good with a gun and stuff like that. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I like that. He one also the, does like, Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I know. I was just going to add um, one of the things I wanted to mention when you mentioned the, when we talked about the eternal longevity, I like how, you know, it's freed him from the ravages of time, basically, unless you get shot, stabbed or hit by a train. I like how those are the stipulations. <laughs> So. They're all, yeah, they're all the dangers of his day. So that is, it's pretty funny. I I also like the line that he has when he's having drinks at Shorty's. And he says, it was the wrong that was done to me that put me down the well of tribulation. So I set myself on a path of vengeance. And I think it's kind of telling because mm-hmm. it's a sort of... Um, there's a little bit of victimhood there mm-hmm. that he doesn't normally, you know, like he doesn't, um, he doesn't sort of put that out there. So it was funny that, you know, this random guy that he's sitting with at the bar, you know, sort of gets more of his full story than, you know, yeah, uh, anybody has really, has really gotten so far and, and not, not just like his story, but like how he feels about it. Yeah. No, it's um, it's definitely interesting, and it's how and who he decides to speak to, like how he decides to to give out like his information, and like who he decides is worthy of you know some stuff is interesting. But I guess it's pretty safe to target the drunk in the bar. Oh, absolutely. So there's there's a safety in that, and he knows that. Like he's good at reading people. That's one of the things he does. Hmm. We got another piece of Dolls' backstory, too, that we now know that he also spent time in Kandahar, but whatever he was doing there is classified. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, uh, the most we know is he was fighting demons. Yeah. And because he, he offers up that information, you know, he dealt with some type of demon. I don't remember what it was. Um, and, like, four people died during the ritual. And he's like, I know what we need. And he's like, that's not very comforting. Like... <laughs> Maybe you don't, like, mention four people died the last time you tried to do this ritual. I tell you what, that was, like, one of my favorite moments was, like, (laughs) how pumped he was getting about his own genius with the transmography spell and everything. It was super endearing to me. I'm, like, I'm equally amped when I think my own idea is brilliant. And it's one of the my most obnoxious qualities. And like (laughs) Winona does the same thing like later in the episode after Dolls' spell goes south and she realizes, you know, that they need to like take it to the lake. So I guess at least I'm in good company. Oh, hey, who doesn't? Who doesn't get super excited like that when they feel that smart and it's like yes, I have a good idea or I had like a really smart moment. And yes, I want to celebrate this and let's let me get excited. And I want other people to get excited for me. So like, how do you not? Um, and I love those, that moment with Winona. I love that. I feel so smart right now. And I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever possible. Cause it is, it's such a, it's a good moment. And like dolls is too, you know, he gets, he's, 
he's all in like, this is my realm almost. Um, and I like how he just casually mentions like, oh yeah, Black Badge just has random artifacts. And like how he, at one point, how they at one point had the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, yes. <laughs> or sorry, the Ark of the Testimony. But yeah. And it's like, at one point they had it. Okay, where did it go? So. And we get to see, you know, Dolls gets possessed a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little. You know, shock him to save him. Just a little bit. You know bit. what surprised me about that scene? What? I'm kind of surprised that Waverly doesn't know CPR. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like something she would have covered at some point. Yeah, I mean, and like, I know not, I mean, most people don't normally go to like a CPR class, <laughs> like sort of like don't normally get like CPR certified and stuff like that. But it just, it struck me as, as odd, um, maybe that she wouldn't know or like how she kind of panicked in that moment. And it's left up to Winona because, you know, it just seems like something that would be in Waverly's warehouse, a wheelhouse. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think so too. I think this is like another example of like how different they are. Like Winona has mm -hmm. seen some stuff, you know, like she's been involved yeah. in some stuff. She's, yeah, she's run around. She's had these crazy adventures that we only ever get, like, snippets of, you know, this, like, whole life that she's lived. And, and mm -hmm. you know, Waverly's been, Waverly's been in purgatory. She's been very much protected as, as much as she could be by Gus and Curtis. And, you know, she's been busy studying all of this stuff and getting her degree and everything else. So I kind of... I kind of like that. Like, I kind of like that this yeah. is like an obvious first for her and, and she doesn't know what to do because she's been studying these things for so long. But now, you know, now it's, now this is real and it's all being put into practice and it's messy and it's unpredictable and it's dangerous. Yeah. And it is completely, it could be one of those things where maybe she does know what to do, but it's just like, it hasn't happened. Right. Yeah. And it's, you don't know how you're going to react. I mean, like I've yes. been certified a few times I need to up my certification now that I think about it. But I've been certified a few times, but it doesn't mean I necessarily wouldn't be able to actually jump into action if it were the occasion were to arise. Yeah, I actually had to get certified for a job when I was much younger. And same here. I don't know that I would be, you know, step aside. I'm certified. You know, like, I, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I like you don't know how how good you are in a crisis and stuff like that unless it actually until it actually happens. So right, it could very well be the case. But it just yeah, it's and it's nice to see why not get that moment too. Yeah, it is. I just want why not to have all the moments. I want them both to have all of the moments. <laughs> Me too. I really liked how like how different their experiences with the first with the first victim Megan Halford was too. Yes. I love yeah, I love that Waverly's first reaction is, Oh, I love her, you know, and Winona is like, You didn't know her like I did. And it's just it's just further evidence of the remarkably different lives that they've lived and that they that they can share this common tragedy, this same tragedy, this same worst night in in their lives but the but their paths diverged that day yeah and i mean it comes down to so many factors it comes down to like who they are at the core as people it comes down to you know the relationships they had with other people it comes down to age it comes down to so many things but yeah i i do like that cut that was on my list too um because it's such an it's a i like that cut from my nona saying she couldn't stand megan and then you know waverly oh, i loved her yeah. <laughs> so yeah i mean it is totally and i mean it's it's awful um you know some of the stuff that winona is telling dolls that megan did and it's like you wonder if like why didn't waverly know like did winona not interact with waverly or did she not want to did she was she trying to protect waverly from like finding out how mean people could be which seems I, I, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's probably that like is uh, especially like, yeah. I mean, like, I think it's just like a typical big sister thing to do. Really. I think like when you can spare your younger siblings, something, I think you try to do that. I know I did. Yeah. I mean, it's was, it's hard not to, but 
you know, like I said, you also wonder if she's been in and out of foster homes and there's a six year age difference. It's not like they went to school together. So yeah, that's true. Yeah. Did they see each other often? I mean, we know why has been kind of in and out of her life, but did they really get to interact when they were kids after, right. after Willow and, um, Ward? So yeah, it just leaves you with some interesting questions. And like I said, there's like, it's just, I love their relationship and there's so much interesting psychology with, with like their relationship and then just them as separate people. And, um, I just, I really enjoy it. <laughs> I do too. I thought it was neat that like doc was really the one to call this, like to, to call the, the twist of the episode. He spends, you know, five seconds with Waverly in that jail cell going through her research and everything. And, you know, saying she's, she's done all this work and she's the family's historian and she can't break the curse. And doc just sums it, sums it all up, you know, like everything that no one wants to face because he's outside of it. And it's, it's, it's not personal for him. And it, at least not yet. And it's not, you know, it's just a, a casual thing that he, easily picks up on yeah i did find that i do have a note about that where he's like you know because she hands him those files and i love the little look on his face when and if you guys don't catch it like go go and rewatch because like the look that doc may like the look on his face after she gives him the files like oh my god like he's so surprised by like how impeccable her research is but also like knowing doc sometimes it's it's a little hard to get a read on him really laying it on thick with Waverly with, you know, calling her a natural born investigator and telling her he believes she's the true keeper of the earth flame because he just got reamed out by Winona for shooting at her and for saying some mean things. So I it's, think, it's, yeah, you know, it, it's, you know, you wonder how genuine that whole scene was too. I don't really. I think he had an ulterior motive. He wanted to get out of that cell. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that Doc does frequently and that he does very, very well. And I think it plays nicely into Doc Holiday, like the real Doc Holiday's, mm -hmm. you know, history as, you know, like a, a poker player. I think he knows a, a bluff when he sees one. And I think he knows how to call people on it. And I think he knows how to read people really well. And I think he yeah. employs that talent whenever it suits him. Yeah. And I think you're right. I think he was absolutely doing that for a reason. I think he was doing it to get her to help him. Yeah. And I mean, like you, cause it just, he lays on. Thick. Yep. <laughs> and um, it's exactly what she needs in some ways what she needs to hear yeah it is what she needs to hear it's what she wants to hear and it also is what doc needs to say to get back in their good graces oh yeah yeah because he did shoot at her <laughs> and we know that he wasn't doing it to hurt her like we know he's he's a good shot like he like we talked about this you know so we know and um it just, it leads to some interesting interactions. It does. But yeah, we do. Doc is an interesting character. Oh, sure. And the guy. I think like another like Winona, like big sister moment that I had that like really like touched me was like her immediately going to rough up Doc in the beginning when Waverly says that he shot at mm -hmm. her. It's just, it's so relatable and you know, when somebody messes with, you know, like your younger sibling, I mean, I don't know about you. I snap. I, I, I convince mm -hmm. myself that I grow three sizes it, it, like taller it, through sheer rage. It's not true, but like, try telling me that. <laughs> okay. So Lara turns into the Hulk. I do. <laughs> rage monster. No, I get it. I mean, it's, it's totally. And I think that's why I, I love this relationship so much because um, you, you get those moments, you get those very real moments where you can totally relate, you know, it's cause you just, you want to take care of your older si or your younger sibling. And mm -hmm. you just, you, you, you know, he wants to run into the Hulk when somebody hurts them. And it's just, 
you just want to, all you want to do is protect them. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's part of what makes us so special with them is just, it's real. Yeah. They don't, they make it relatable. They make it, you know, like a real thing. And I love it. Yeah. It's, it's so good. I, I do like that moment too. Um, and I was like, I don't have that on my list, but it's literally the first thing. on my list. <laughs> Yeah. I think it was one I kind of like skipped over and forgot to mention. <laughs> yeah. It happens. I had like, like, I guess like one of my last like big things, I had like a question for you because Winona has that, you know, she's like going to shoot the demon barber and she says, you know, like mm-hmm. guilt, guilty sinner, just another dude telling me mm-hmm. what I've done wrong. But now I'm about to do some right. And I wonder if like, what do you think? Like, I wonder if that was her, like, I wonder if that was the first time Winona em- embraced her birthright. Cause it's like, you know, like she's, she's adamant and she's, she's very controlled and she's, I, I, that, that was kind of like the feeling that I, that I got from it. It's, it's her, but now I'm going to do some, I'm going to do some right. Like it, it, that seemed like a decision to me. It played like a, like a decision to me. What do you think? I think it's another bit of it. Yeah. Um, because we do see her kind of slowly owning it. And I think that's another piece of it. Another, another step. To where she's like, kind of, yeah, this is my job. And, you know, she's also, yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> um, it's another piece of us seeing, like, her really... Because she doesn't... This is not a show where, you know, the hero gets told, okay, you're something special. And the hero immediately, oh, okay, and jumps into it with both feet. Right. She's a very reluctant hero. She's a very reluctant heir. And we see this, you know, with her telling Waverly, yes, you should have been the heir. You should be the heir. Um, and, you know, it's all of that conversation. And the only way Waverly becomes the heir is if Winona dies. Yeah. And that doesn't even seem to be, like, anything that she considers when telling Waverly. She's, you know, straight up looks at her and says, you should be the heir. And I think that's an important part of it, too, because she is still, like, Yes, she's kind of owning it, but by the same token, she still very much acknowledges that she may not be, she's not the best person for the job. So it's still, there's, there's still a little bit of that in this. Yeah, that's true. But no, you're right. I think it's just another step in her. And I mean, we haven't mentioned it yet, but uh, August is another one of the seven. Yes. So he is the fifth of the seven. So fast. I think it's the fifth. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, because we got two in one episode. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's the fifth. I forget how like I, I always forget how quickly we got them. So yeah, um, we get a couple pieces of information. Speaking of like information about characters, we get a couple of pieces of uh, information about Bobo too. Mm-hmm. So like he tells Stalls he had friends in Maldito, which is kind of curious. Like, so did they just come visit Purgatory? <laughs> Um, I actually wondered the exact same thing. Yeah. Maybe it was pen pals. Oh, so how sweet. cute would that be? Little demony pen pals. Like, do the demons in Maldito also get sent to hell a few times? Like, maybe they met up in hell and it was like, hey, I'll, you know, I'll write you. And it was like, I don't know. How does that work? Do they love fur as much as Bobo loves fur? Maybe that's where he got some of his furs. Maybe they were like good friends and they're like, came up and visited and have some fur yeah (laughs) i made you this coat Mm mm-hmm yeah see it's we've created this this is canon now this is (laughs) yeah that's it it's done (laughs) i expect to see this in fix now um and one of the other things we get uh because that was another thing it's like he mentions that he is friends in maldito and one of the things i meant to mention when i mentioned uh why and the curse it's curious that all of the revenants, you know, are outlaws that he killed and then ended up in purgatory. Like, cause in theory, they're from all over. Cause you know, purgatory was one of the last places that, Oh, wait a minute. It's like the boundaries of the ghost river triangle. Right. Isn't that kind of like what defines yeah, no, it? No, I just, um, no, yeah, sorry. I had a thought where I was like, am I getting canon wrong? But I'm not. 
So I had to like stop and think because it's, you know, like how do they all end up in there? Because they're not just from the outlaws he killed weren't just in purgatory. Like we're just in the triangle. I think it's like a hotbed situation. And this is just totally like my take on it. Right. Like I don't have anything to back this up in any way, but I think like, you know, a lot went down in purgatory. And then I think that, you know, like the sort of, you know, spread out victims here or there or, you know, whatever, sort of migrated to the hotbed, sort of to purgatory. I think purgatory became like the place to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, well, and I mean, like the whole deal with the curse is it, it resurrects them, the people mm-hmm. that he's killed. I get that. So, obviously, the same word, but, like, it just seems like, why purgatory? Like, because he obviously left purgatory. Um, you'd think they just kind of follow him around instead of just, you know. Like, you'd think the part of the curse would be, because, like, why Nona left? And she ended up coming back when she was 27. But, like, it seems like a weird caveat of the curse that the demons are stuck in the triangle. And not, like... The heirs. The earth. yeah like the earth family yeah but no it just kind of we don't get a lot of information about kind of did he not kill anybody after that you know Mm -hmm. after he was cursed so like where was that i don't know it just seems you get a lot of questions too and um, i know some of it we can answer in the spoiler section i think but i also really desperately need to rewatch but at this point (laughs) where we're at with it um so it is interesting like how many were purgatory residents and how many lived other places and we're like well crap (laughs) so i also really want to know about maldito because it has come up twice already yeah so do i oh and one more bobo thing when he tells like doc sorry dolls and there's Having Doc and Dolls gets so confusing sometimes when you're trying to... I know, all those Ds. <laughs> um, don't need any Ds. Catherine. <laughs> don't make me scold you. I am not even sorry about that. I should be, but I am not. Not <laughs> one bit. Anyway, so when Dolls and Winona go to the um, trailer park... Mm-hmm. And Bobo gives him permission to talk to Father Malik, who we haven't talked about yet. Um, but he does say, like, tick tock, tick tock. And, I mean, he knew exactly who they were looking for and knew that Malik was the wrong revenant. And I, like, Bobo is so, like, I, I do enjoy him as a villain. Um, and I caught that, you know, you catch that on a rewatch, how he looks at him and is like, tick tock, yeah. tick tock. <laughs> and, um, you know, it just, he gets a kick out of kind of, Sending them on a, I guess, I guess it'd be kind of a fool's errand almost, but you know, he gets kind of a kick out of like, oh, okay, yeah, go see this nasty revenant. He's not the guy you're looking for, but I'm not gonna tell you that. Right? I mean, why would he? Yeah, and I like it too. I like it too from just a wasting time point of view because when you think about it, time's mm-hmm. really all he's got right now. You know, so he's like, yeah, go, you know, mm-hmm. chase your own tails for a while. Let us watch. Yeah, he's. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> Have fun visiting the stinky revenant. <laughs> and when you add that element into it, it does sort of become a child's prank. It really does. I mean, because that dude, that revenant, like Malik is something else. You know, he's, uh, he, he'd be like, you know, a member of the Westboro Baptist Church. <laughs> Whoa. What? No, I was just fitting. I'd never thought about it before. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, he's... I think about this character. And um, so, yeah, it's just funny. And he's just... Oh, and he's got nothing to contribute at all. Actually, no, he does give them information. He does actually give them information. It's just one that, you know, you don't really... You kind of brush off. But yet he does mention that it's about the guilt. He's yeah. the first one to say that. Um, we didn't see Winona kill him in this episode because she, she made that deal with Bobo. So it should be interesting when she does come back to, to do the deed. Yeah. Hopefully she remembers nose plugs this time. Just, you know, what is it like Vaseline under the, under your nose or chewing gum? 
That helps smells. Vicks Vapor Rub. Yeah. That would be my recommendation. <laughs> so I don't have a lot of big things, but I do have a couple of little things. Um, like uh, Gus is running shorties now. <laughs> yes. And Nicole was sadly absent from the episode, but she did get mentioned. But it seems that uh, Purgatory does have another another officer because he's the one the random dude came to the scene of Megan's uh, death from the beginning. And, you know, no thanks. Just bring Nicole back. Yeah, I had an all-capsy note here that said, you're not officer hot, sir. Where is officer hot? Right. Thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, it's really what we're here for, isn't it? Yes. We're just here for, for Nicole, but I have to mention her. We have to. So, um, I lost my train of thought. I got so wrapped up in Nicole. That happens. There are, there are worse things. It was my train of thought. Um, let's see. Random crap that I stole in dimension. Oh, we didn't really talk about the probation officer. That was one thing we kind of definitely left out. Yeah, that's true. We hadn't gotten to. So I did... You know, talk about, like, back to Winona. I can't believe I forgot to mention this because it's literally right here in my notes saying, probation officer. You know, talk about Winona kind of having a rough go of things. You know, she couldn't even get a probation officer that was a decent dude. On the up and up, right? Like, yeah, I mean, she went back, she got, went back to Juby for the third time because of this dude. And, like, that's not great for anybody when you're sent to Juby for the third time. Or the first. Well, no, I mean, it's just, the, yeah, but I mean, when you keep getting reset there, like, it's one time, it's like, okay, but, you know, there's, there's a point where you're just like, oh, like, <laughs> it's it's not great. Truth. So, yeah, I mean, no, no trip to Juvie is good, but the more times you get sent there, it's, it's really not great. So, yeah, it's just, that just adds on to Winona's crap, you know, with, <laughs> you know, she gets a short end of the stick, and now she can't even, like, you know. She gets sucked into selling, like, you know, being <laughs> stews like drug meal, basically. Like, he's, he uses, you know, kids and anybody else who he's supposed to uh, protect. Yeah. Shady, shady. Yeah. Characters. Awful. Yeah. It's, it's just so messed up. I do like um, the first person that Winona tries to get to forgive her is, you know, Pete. <laughs> so she dated as a teenager and then went home with, you know, his brother. And I just like how she tries to deliver all of that and thinks it's going to work and it just doesn't. I like to like the, the thought process behind it, right? That she's like, yeah. she's got a running, cause it goes back to that unbelievable guilt we talked about earlier. So she's got a running tally of everyone she's wronged. So she just starts as far back as she can. Yeah. And I mean, I, I just, I like how that was her first thought. Like, she didn't immediately go to, oh, I've wronged right. Waverly or anything. She immediately goes to, let me get this little crap out of the way. And, you know, these. I think, yeah. And, like, I think it's, I think it's chronological. Yeah. That's my, I think, like, she thought the way to tackle it was to start, like, it, to go through it chronologically because there were just so many. But that was just, that was just my take on yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I, who knows? You could be very right. But. Yeah, I, I just, I love that little scene. Um, let's see. I didn't have a lot of other things. We did kind of talk on August and how he died, but not really. August Hamilton, that was one thing I wanted to mention. Um, back to the Revenant. He's kind of the first innocent Revenant we've seen. You know, and it's interesting how that went because he was, he was killed because he was going to testify against somebody. Yeah. I mean, granted, in the situation he was in where he was technically acting as, uh, what is it, a priest? Yeah, taking confession, basically, <laughs> like, that's how they approached him. You know, there was probably a thing there where it was like people expected it to be confidential. And, you know, there's no expectation. You can't actually do that when it's not actually a priest. But, right. um, yeah, it's just I thought it was interesting because we did kind of get an idea that, you know, not all of these revenants are necessarily cr criminals. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to mention that before we got to quotes and stuff like that. Oh, and 
you know, last week you mentioned, I think it was last week you mentioned wanting to keep a tally of like the body parts. Yeah. The body parts tally. Yeah. there. And you didn't get that. I didn't. I actually thought that as soon as Megan had her throat slit, I was like, oh, it's not a decapitation. Oh, there goes my bracket. Oh, dear. Drag. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> oh, we were on such gotta a, love a show where you're first. Yeah, we were on such a roll. I know, but I mean, you gotta love a show where, oh, it wasn't a decapitation <laughs> is like a legitimate first thought you can have. Those those are the shows I tend to like, yeah. Um, Alrighty, so I think, unless you've got anything else, which you probably don't, because I'm usually the one with the monster <laughs> list. No, I, I'm good other than quotes, dude. Yep, okay, um... Let's let's go into quotes then. I mean, I can't imagine you have any favorite quotes. I this is not a quotable show. I do. Right? My favorite, and it made me it made me so happy. It made me remember like why I loved her. My favorite quote this episode was Gus, and that was when Doc walks into the bar. She mm-hmm. says, "Management reserves the right to refuse service to jackasses. I'm management. You're the jackass." Uh, yeah, that's a, I love that line. Sickest burn of the episode. Because I do also, I enjoy Doc's line before that, though. He's like, I'm going to need a bottle of whiskey, a glass, and some of those ice squares. I just like that he calls them ice yeah. squares. <laughs> it just makes me happy. I love uh, I, I love the the lines they give to Doc. I like how he's, you know, his old timiness and everything. It, it makes me happy. You all, you kind of, you called out earlier another one of my favorites, which is this de- deputy Marshall Dolls laughing. I've never been more scared in my life. That was a really funny moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and Winona, sorry, I'm supposed to find all the people I've hurt and beg their stupid forgivenesses, but everyone hates you, Winona. I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> I love that exchange so much. Speaking of like Doc and the amazing like sort of lines they give him and like how he like his old timiness and and how they work that into the joke. I really loved he's coughing up water. Well, just give him some laudanum. He'll be all right. It was just like (laughs) three cheers for tuberculosis humor. You know what I mean? Like that was a really nice touch. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Yeah. I I like that. He was just like totally not picking up. It was just like, Oh yeah. You know, just give him this. He'll be be fine. Yeah. Um, Worked for me. (laughs) <laughs> yeah um what else i liked winona's that's like saying the titanic almost made land <laughs> yeah and waverly's you you should be ashamed of yourselves the barber is coming up to they're coming to slice of winona and you guys are blubber blubbering like a big bunch of bratty babies just yeah. because i can't imagine how much of a pain that must have been especially i i always um i try to keep an ear out because dominique is british yeah um, so I try to keep an ear out for accent slips, and I'm honestly surprised she didn't slip on that line. When you've got lines like that, it's hard to imagine not slipping. Oh, and I like when she's listing a later, a listing off a list of things she's um, like trying to, you know, get that list of what, what or trying to, you know, do the forgiveness thing. Mm-hmm. And and you're the chosen one. That's definitely not what I'm mad about. It's like, yeah, really, I love you. <laughs> just immediately trying to backtrack. I also, I really like in the beginning when they get called to the scene, you know, and and Megan is dead. I like the, you know, repent sinners message written on the mirror and Winona just says good times. Like, I just, I really like that moment. (laughs) Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's, um, I mean, I always have so many lines because this 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 series is just so much fun. Um, like why not? So what? We're dealing with the David Blaine of Revenants. Yeah. And dolls. Well, we better not be because that would be a game changer. Oh, and and when dolls mentions like, when were you going to tell me you were kicking it with the ghost of Doc Holiday? And why not? like, he's not a ghost. He's got internal lo- longevity. I was going to tell you before Christmas because then you could be each other's secret Santas. And how cute would that be? <laughs> <laughs> I love that one too. So much shade on this show. I like her. Um, I like her. Put the sheet back on, Stumpy. I just ate breakfast. Yeah, that one was on my list too. Um, oh, and Winona, upon finding out what Malik was hanged for, you know, any idea where this guy is so I can shoot him in his dong? I just appreciate her. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many. Oh, and I like Waverly telling, you know, when she's got to get on a bus. And she's like, no, I'm done running. And there's a lot of mirrors on buses. (laughs) God, I hate buses. 
for one of them. Oh, and like the end scene with the Earth sisters when one of them comes up and says, I'm sorry. And Waverly's like, you ate all the corn <laughs> chips again. And she's like, no. Yeah. Yeah. I did. <laughs> so you can't leave her near corn chips, apparently. Oh, and at the end of that, when Winona's like, isn't this the part where you say you love me too? And Waverly's like, you're awfully needy for a lone wolf. And I just love that. I do too. I love their whole exchange. I literally sat here and wrote up that whole exchange. I am not going to sit here and read that whole exchange. I will just say that I sat, like, I have that whole exchange, like that whole moment on my, on my list. I love them. But I think that was all I had. Yeah, that's it for me. All right. Is there anything else we wanted to talk about before we, uh, wrap this part of it up i think i am ready for spoilers all righty so we're gonna wrap it up um as per usual if you are um new to the show and you just wanted a spoiler free discussion once where we've given our twitter information and stuff like that you can go ahead and shut it off um because we are going to move into a spoiler discussion shortly thereafter and for any of you who are familiar with the show or don't care about being spoiled, uh, please stick around and um, we have a fun spoiler discussion ahead. So um, with that, uh, Lara, where can they find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at RS Mayfair. Alrighty. And you can find me on Twitter at CMUSHA. That's at C-M-E-U-S-H-A-W. And um, make sure you give... Then make your piece uh, Twitter a follow. And that Twitter account is at 4YE underscore MYP podcast. So that's, um, and that's the number four. And if you're interested in reading anything uh, non Winona Earp related or Winona Earp related, whatever you, whatever you want, uh, you can check out the 4YE Twitter. It's at 4 underscore Y underscore E and both Laura and I have um, profiles on there. You can check out if you're so inclined. So I think that about does it. We will see you next week for a discussion on episode five. If you're leaving us, if you're sticking around, then give us a few minutes and we'll be into spoilers. Thank you so much. Thanks guys. All righty. So thank you to all of those who stuck around. And we're going to get into a spoiler discussion. So it's spoilers for the rest of season one and all of season two. Um, so, Laura, where do you want to start with our spoilers? I think I want to start with Doc first. We get the first concrete allusion to Doc's deal with Constance Cludy, the Stone Witch. His longevity, which is tied to, we know, the ring he wears, which is also the first thing that we see on his hand, which is the first part of him that we see. So we got like a, a little piece of that in this episode. Yes. Yeah. And um, yeah, we kind of found out that he's not completely, like, he's still human. He's just, you know, and he's not like immune or anything. So he can die. We found that out. Yeah. He, he has lo eternal longevity, but it doesn't say anything about him being like bulletproof or anything. Like you said. No, and this is where the concern is because, you know, that his ring is a seal and it gets broken. Yep. And we're not sure what the case is, what that means for him. Yeah. So this is where we first find out, you know, the that his eternal longevity cured him of his chronic TB and freed him from the ravages of time. Yeah. So, yeah, it's... um. We still don't know what's up with that. <laughs> we still don't know. I mean, he's coughing again. Yeah. So we don't know what it means, though. Yep. One of the big cliffhangers of season two, all those little coughs. Um, yeah. So Doc is coughing again, and this is where we first hear about that. Um, there was another Doc note I had, maybe. You know, I copied this whole thing into the spoiler section, and now I don't remember why. Oh, that happens sometimes. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's what it was. I'm having timeline problems, and I apologize in advance for, you know, it's been a while since I watched season two. Yeah. And even though I know I've talked about it a lot. Wasn't Doc... I'm unclear about some timeline stuff here. 
especially with when Winona has that episode, like in that episode where Winona goes back in time in season two. Yes. Um, it's not a clear timeline. It's very broken up. Like we do jump ahead. Right. Um, but it's weird. Like I thought doc was in purgatory when Wyatt was cursed or like at least in the triangle. Yeah. And maybe he was dude. Maybe he was in the triangle, but he just wasn't in purgatory. Yeah. Or I mean, at least I just, I thought he was around when, when Wyatt was cursed. And I mean, yeah, in that, yeah, in the flashback episode. I mean, yeah, because he- Or the mystical yeah. walk through time, whatevs. Yeah, because she runs in right. the dock in the bar where Robert Spain is, and Robert goes outside, and that's where he gets shot, and where Cludy gets shot. No, yeah, I think that's, yeah, I don't think that's a timeline for you problem, you know? Maybe, but like I said, that timeline when she goes back in time is a little screwy. But yeah, it's, I I thought Doc was in purgatory with Wyatt. Like, Wyatt was there for a little bit. So that's why, like, I was watching this and I was like, wait a minute. Because I had forgotten yeah. some of the scene. And I just, I thought that was, that's kind of a, I have trouble with continuity errors. And if it's a continuity error, then I'm like, oh. Maybe, because like when the, when the walk through time happens, mm -hmm. right? We don't actually see Wyatt, correct? Correct. So Wyatt is presumably dead in that walk through time, right? Or is he still alive? No, he's still alive. Um, Crap. Okay. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, because I'm having there's trouble the making shootout sense with Cludy because that's what that's what makes it's the shootout with Cludy that turns Bobo into a revenant that turns Robert into a revenant because Robert gets in the way. Like Robert right. Cludy uses the demon Cludy uses Robert as a shield. And yes. Robert tells Wyatt to shoot him. And that's how Robert gets turned into a revenant. Yeah. No, dude, I'm trying to make sense of it in my head. But now, now you've screwed the timeline up for me. And I'm pretty sure that's just a, I think that's just a flub, my friend. Yeah, I know. Like I said, it's just, it's when you're going back and like really talking about this stuff. It's that's yeah. where I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, no, I can't make sense of it in my head either. Maybe, maybe somebody listening can though. Maybe, and like I said, I know there's a timeline thing, but also like he's at least got to be nearby because Constance Cludy is the one who, and like the timeline is, you know, why it kills the demon Cludy, and then Constance, you know, does her thing with Doc as a way to get back at Wyatt in in a, mm -hmm. in a way. So. Yeah, it's, some of it was a little choppy, and now that I'm, like, really, really sitting down and thinking about it. Um, I'm going to pull up my recap really quick. I don't think there's any way to make this make sense, dude. Even the, like, the, the it, like, just go with vibe, right? Like, just yeah. think about the emotions that we saw in this episode. In this episode, they have, like, a tearful goodbye at Doc's bedside, right? He's sick. He's whatever. Mm -hmm. And then later in that same episode, but, but they leave it on good terms. You feel me? And then in the magical yeah. walk through time, when Robert Svane finds Doc and he's like, you got to help whatever, you know, Doc's like, ah, oh, he's, he's no friend of mine. And he's like, all, oh, you know, we'll screw Wyatt. So like even the, even the emotional undercurrent does not jive with what we just saw. Yeah. Hmm. Unless it took place immediately after. You know what I mean? Unless yeah. unless they had the altercation where he finds Doc in bed with two women and he's well and then and then he goes off and gets himself killed and Doc like follows behind him and they've just had this fight and he's like screw you and then Robert comes in. Like that's the only way this makes sense. I, I'm not even worried about, like, Wyatt stuff, necessarily. I'm just having a lot of trouble with, like, the Cludy stuff, I think. Like, I don't know. Yeah, and I just, like, we know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to try to go too far into it, I think. I'm going to leave. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to leave it alone. I think it's a substantial hole. I don't, I, I think you, you found a good one there. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stop picking because I have a bad habit of doing that on TV and not everybody appreciates it. Um, we uh, did 
get our first uh, Mixion uh, mention in this episode, and we later find out um, in season two, Mixion is a big part of uh, part of season two. Um, you know, just you know, possesses Waverly for like five episodes. Yeah, no big, just like Dark Waverly, no Gooverly, no my girl and Gunona and Gunona. Man, that's fun. It really Those was. are good times. But we do get our first uh, glimpse of Mixion, and it's interesting because, you know, I don't know if it was because of the ritual aspect of it with dolls, how he wasn't actually possessed, but it is interesting how they used, you know, 50,000 volts against dolls and didn't really think to do anything like that with <laughs> But later on. Granted, we have since found out that dolls is not exactly human, so that could have been part of why he survived that, like a heavy voltage, but it was also like just a a taser. So a person can take that much or should have been able to take that much. I have, so I thought it was, yeah, I have like the exact same note about dolls. This is like the first like glimpse of his, you know, like hybrid, you know, like his, like his like reptile serum and stuff, like the stuff that he's taking that makes him so strong. This is like the first foreshadowing that we get that he is a little more than human yeah but uh, like now that i'm thinking about it though like that was just a regular like handheld taser that in theory you would use for self-defense that shouldn't have enough voltage to kill somebody at least not on a regular but can you like amp those up yeah i think one i think they have different settings and two i don't know if that was like a personal taser or if that was like a bbd issue taser because if it was then it could have been much more powerful than something a civilian would get. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess the question is really whose taser was it? Right. Hmm. So many questions. So many. Um, I kind of close that one. We do get to, you know, they mentioned the artifact warehouse and we get to see it in, in season two, episode one. Mm -hmm. So, but we get our first mention of it in this episode. Sadly, we do not see much of it. No, we don't. Um, it's too brief. And what happened with that blood contract? I don't know. We still don't know. Um, also, the line about there being no church in purgatory is confusing to me, considering we now know in season two that there's a, a, a church. But I guess it can be a lot of that attributed to they didn't really have a plan, maybe. Or they had to adjust it. Was or it? they weren't. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe maybe the church is, like, just on the boundary of the town or something. I don't know. Because it's not – there wasn't anything around it, you remember? Like, yeah. it was just, like, a lot of barren land. So maybe it sits, like, outside of purgatory. Yeah, maybe. But even, like, they still had Juan Carlo. I mean, he was kind of – Yeah? Not great, but <laughs> – but Yeah, I don't know. It's just uh, – Apparently, I just have a lot of nitpicky things. That's my spoiler edition this week, <laughs> is Catherine gets nitpicky. One thing I, I wanted to talk to you about that you, you made me think of earlier when we were discussing the episode was, you know, like, we go through these seven so fast. Mm -hmm. yeah. You, like, made that, like, comment. One, something that, like, you know, kind of, like, came to mind was, like, that, that it happened a lot in Lost Girl that, like, you would think you were getting set up for a certain something to be like the big bad or the big goal of the season. Yeah. And it would essentially, it not it's not that it's a red herring, you know, because like you follow that, you know, through like Winona, yeah. you know, keeps, yeah, keeps killing, you know, this, she kills the seven, all that stuff. But, um, you know, it just, you, you think one thing is going to be the ultimate goal or point. Right. And then it's not. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, it's, and like I said, I forget how quickly we blow through five of the seven because the next member of the seven we get is in episode six and then it's episode eight and then that's it. Yeah. So it's not, it's like boom, 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 boom. And then we get a break. Yeah. And it is, I like how it was done. I do like it. And I'm sure I will say it again because sometimes I forget what I say. So sorry for those of you who have to deal with me repeating stuff all the time. Um, I do like how they do that. I do like when you've got like, okay, here's something that looks like it's going to be the overall arc, but then let's give you something for the last few episodes, which is what they did in season one. Um, I know, like, Buffy did that often. Yeah, I I like it if you pull it off. Yes. You know, like, like, Buffy did a good job at that. You know, like, season, 
what six in particular, yes. you know, like that was very, very well done. It's a, it's very hard to pull off. I'll say that, you know, and I like Lost Girl, you know, I like mm -hmm. Lost Girl. Lost Girl did not pull it off every season. No. So it's like, it, it's just, it's a balancing act, you know, like one thing you can't do is get people super invested in a storyline or in a villain. And then you rush this, or, or I mean, that's how it can feel. It can feel like it's, it abruptly comes to a close. And then all of a sudden it's almost the end of the season and you're asked to sort of care about this whole new thing. And you're like, yeah. wait, what? Like, where has this been the whole time? So that's the, that's the, the thing that you don't want to feel. But I, I did not feel that at all for this season. I want to say that's that I'm not saying that's what they did. I'm saying that's yeah. the danger. And honestly, they did it in season two with the mission because you gave us this, oh, this really interesting possession storyline and then mm -hmm. wrapped it up five episodes in and you could have, I don't know, it's just like, oh, okay, cool. And I don't know, there's like, you could, like, maybe it could have gone another episode or something like that. I don't know. So it's like, but it is, it's such a, it's a balancing act. It really is. Um, yeah. And speaking of Lost Girl. Speaking of Lost Girl. Um, so... Yeah, we do record these sometimes a little ahead of time. This episode will come out like a couple weeks after this news, but I think there was something Laura wanted to bring up, some some news that we uh, received about season three this week. I do. I have a, a little bit of news to, to cover with you guys, so just bear with me. I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget, but we got exciting casting news for season three this week. Chantel Riley of the of Frankie Drake Mysteries has been cast in a recurring role. We know that she'll play Kate. Uh, TV Junkies has the exclusive, you guys, so go check that out um, in their articles if you haven't already. They describe Kate as bold, sophisticated, sensual, and deadly. They also say the character has been on an intense manhunt for as long as she can remember, but no word yet on what she's hunting, and that bit about her, like, hunt being a lifelong thing makes me think that the target has to be at least, uh, I would think older than her. Cause that's like a weird, you know, like then I'm, I, it sounds like a, a family vendetta, mm -hmm. right? Like it sounds like a, you killed my father and now I'm going to hunt you down. That, mm -hmm. That's just how it reads to me. But also lost girl, um, Zoe Palmer, Zoe Palmer of lost girl and dark matter was also announced. She'll play Jolene, but the character, at least for now, is not recurring. TV Junkies alludes to Jolene as being something of a wild child who might just steal your partner. That's a quote. And honestly, with a name like Jolene, that would have been my guess. So thanks, Dolly Parton. And I'm, I was telling Catherine this the other day, you guys, when we were talking about this casting news. This is the first time in my life that I am honestly hoping Zoe Palmer is not playing gay because I I can't hate her. Uh -huh. I'm going to warn you guys right now. Way hot drama or no way hot drama, she will always be Dr. Hot Pants uh, in my heart. So, like, no matter what she stirs up, like, I'm just thrilled to have her. Yeah, I'm super excited about the new casting news. Um, it's just it's a delight to have Zoe Palmer on my screens. And I don't know, uh, I'm not familiar with Chantal Riley's work, but her the character description sounds really intriguing. And you wonder, is she after a revenant is she after an herb who is she after i mean how deep does this vendetta go is it a familial thing what's what's the deal and i'm i'm really excited to kind of find out what what her deal is um you that you know it should yeah, be really interesting that that is like that could be really fun actually like what you just said it would be really great you know if we could bring her in and she was just 1000% an ally right and there's no like no rubbing the team the wrong way or, you know, I'm trying to kill Doc Holiday for some reason that none of us are really going to understand or like something like that. Like, wouldn't it be great if she's like, cause we just got Bobo back, you know, like Bobo was resurrected kind of out of nowhere. So like, wouldn't it be great if her vendetta is, well, I mean, I don't even know that her manhunt, like, wouldn't it be awesome if she's just after him and it, that way it's not really like a member of the team, but it's somebody that, you know, like they're kind of, trying to build a bigger backstory around and stuff. They're sort of stretching Bobo out and making him more than just a villain. So like, I think that would be really, really awesome if it worked out that way. 
Yeah, we maybe. I mean, I still think Winona might be the tie too. I mean, there's a lot of stuff about Winona's past we don't know. So that should be really, really intriguing. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, just great news all around. Megan follows too, got cast or is gonna be Mama Earp. So we just we have so much to look forward to. We really do. And like I said, by the time you guys listen to this, it'll be old news. I don't wanna say old news, but it will be a couple weeks out. But yeah, this is just the news drop this week and we're just ahead of the game as far as recording goes. But yeah, we'll we'll try to as as news drops, we'll try to mention it because it it is fun. <laughs> So it's, it's a good time. Um, I didn't have a lot else. On, I didn't really have anything else on my list. No, I don't either. Other than just that already. So I think we're going to wrap it up again. So thank you so much for those of you who stuck around. Um, we really appreciate it. And we will see you next week. Bye, you guys.